Namaste angels are going to be my new moon in um, Aquarius reading. I'm going to get right into it. I've, this will be my third time telling you all, um, to those of you who watch me with regularity, how I feel about this moon, how I feel about it is, it is happening at the same time as Venus in Pisces, which began today. Today, the day on which I'm doing this reading is Sunday, February 11th, Venus entered Pisces. What that means for me is the planet of love, the planet of abundance, the planet of popularity, right? Love, money, the, and the goddess of those things. Entering Pisces, this um, very watery sign, love, emotion, sensitivity. And Pisces, the more youthful of the water element. So we have that too, um, very jovial as well. Now, speaking of jovial and joy, it is also the same day as this moon, the first day of the month of Adar on the Hebrew calendar. The month of Adar is the month of joy. So we have the month of joy coupled with Valentine's Day falls the day before. And some people are into that. And of course, um, Venus entering Pisces just four days prior and will still be there at this time. It should be absolutely Sagittarius. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe it should be absolutely Sagittarius. That's not what I was going to say. I was going to say fabulous. But I think that maybe Sagittarius was trying to come out of my mouth because the masculine planet of love is there. Mars in Sagittarius. Very fiery and the youthful, the more youthful of the fire element maybe going up against the more youthful of the water element. So that can make it very exciting too. And all sort of orchestrated, <laughs> it's the word I was looking for, by this very aggressive Mars. So the, it might be in Sagittarius, which is the more youthful, but when we think Mars, or at least when I do, we think Emperor, we think Aries, maybe Leo, authoritative, um, father-like. And when we think Venus, we think queen of swords, not necessarily page, right? So we have that coming together as well. Speaking more specifically about Aquarius, which is most directly represented by the queen of swords in the tarot as a fixed sign. Um, Aquarius is freedom loving. Aquarius is open minded. Aquarius is free thinking. Aquarius is non judgmental. Aquarius is courageous, willing to stand alone on a concept, on an idea. I don't care if nobody else agrees with me. Um, that's not going to prevent me from saying what I have to say or doing what I desire to do, being who I want to be and how I want to be. I'll be one man on an island if I have to. That's Aquarius. I know this very well because I'm an Aquarius moon. Um, and so that coupled with all this other very high, strong, spiritual energy of love, emotion, joy, happiness, you know, exaltation, reconciliation, reunion, it's marriage, engagement, you know, all that comes with, with this time of year. Um, also this week we have Fat Tuesday, which is also a celebration too, and very, very huge in um, Louisiana at least, right, New Orleans or New Orleans, depending upon where one is from. Um, and that is about you know, celebration, getting fat on our, our, the, our most um, richest foods and everything before we commit. So to tie it into love and emotion and feeling before we commit to ourselves, what am I giving up for the month of Lent? Right? It's a commitment made out of love to oneself and to the divine. 
So we have all that going on at once. And that's what I think the, um, the new moon in Aquarius is going to be about. It's going to be about going after what one wants, how one wants it, when they want it, and not giving a damn about what anybody else has to say about it, period. In the most glorious of Aquarian styles with a, bit, a little bit of um, water to soften it up water and love and guided by the goddess of those things of love and abundance with that i'm gonna go to the dice i'm beginning with 29 massage and email which is also very aquarian um communication is what the air signs are about I'm a Gemini sun. We are known as the great communicators of the Zodiac. But again, I'm an Aquarius moon. And for me, the energy of Aquarius is not only um, one of communicative, that, that is communicative, but more specifically via an electronic means, text, email. Massage was what the other dice said. Ah. Spirit still says email as well as cocktail and sex. Speaking of the more youthful of the water element, I'm beginning with the princess of summer, which is the praise of summer, the page of cups, who is sensitive, kind, open hearted and inexperienced. And yes, for me, as it relates to the tarot, a Pisces, but can also be a Cancer or a Scorpio or anybody likened to these traits or attributes. You can expect to kindle a new romantic relationship or a close platonic friendship. You may suddenly receive an emotional message from someone or be invited to a social event. This can all happen on or around the day of the moon. And opening, speaking about that um, very powerful energy of the masculine red planet, and I said maybe Leo, although Aries comes to mind first, coming to the um, strength, major arcana card number 11, which does represent the sign of Leo. True strength is displayed through kindness, forgiveness, and compassion. You have tremendous personal power and courage. It may take strength in order to be able to forgive and, and exercise some compassion, release whatever you might be holding on to in order to send out a, um, an emotional message to someone or to be receptive to one that comes your way. Strength. Whoop. There she is. There she is. The queen of winter. When it jumped out, it revealed also the queen of spring, the queen of winter. All of your life experiences have prepared you for this moment of truth. It's time to declutter your home, to clear away situations that aren't working for you anymore, and to disengage from people who create more drama than happiness. The Queen of Winter is experienced, self-sufficient, brilliant, and funny. She's also an Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, or someone like into those traits or attributes. Queen of Winter. And the Prince of Autumn, who's trustworthy, dedicated, protective, and funny. Today there's actually, um, this is the second time I recorded another video and I'm like, is Chandler playing with my camera? And it's started again. Um, the Prince of Autumn is trustworthy, dedicated, protective, and funny. Hang on a second, let me see if I can fix this. Chamuel. As it turns out, he was trying to get my attention. My daughter was texting me that um, she's in the shower, that she needed her brush. And that may be why I started to say Sagittarius before too, because that would represent him as well. Um, <laughs> but you know, my mind was someplace else. I was already engaged with you guys. In any case, um, the Queen of Winter is experienced, self-sufficient, brilliant, and funny. And the Prince of Autumn is trustworthy, dedicated, protective, and also funny. It's important to make a detailed plan before starting any new endeavor. Once you have that plan in place, then you can take immediate action and get as much accomplished as possible. There's a Capricorn moon today, and that can be why the Prince of Autumn is showing up. Also, this could be Venus in her other capacity. She is both, you know, um, a queen of winter and of autumn in her, um, as she rules Taurus. 
the Prince of Autumn can be a Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo in your life, impactful upon you at this time. It can be you yourself, or it can be anybody, you know, just like into these um, attributes or traits, or perhaps some money or something coming your way, a new job or an offer being made to you. Prince of Autumn, I'll go one more. Nice. It's the king of summer who's warm hearted, devoted, loving, and faithful. A trustworthy person or relationship enters your life and you may receive wise and compassionate advice from someone who speaks directly from the heart. So if somebody um, does give you advice, if you seek advice from somebody, we're guided to, to trust that it is genuine and organic. The king of summer, like the page, can be a Pisces, Cancer or Scorpio, or somebody likened to those traits or attributes. And it's the 10 of autumn. Contentment comes from knowing that your finances are secure and your family's material needs are taken care of. It's important to honor traditions and to have pride in your heritage as well as the accomplishments of your ancestors. This can represent a lump sum of money coming your way. Maybe that's what the Prince of Autumn showed up to bring, um, you know, a sack of cash. Um, this can also be about joy and happiness and peace and security, uh, particularly of a material and or financial nature. And I got to tell you, a couple of weeks ago, I was recording a reading. I don't know for what, um, what the theme was, if it was a, a general or the, the love reading or whatever, but I was recording a reading and I was thrown off for a second because this, I could hear this song playing from another room and it was the um, original version of a song called Daddy's Home. That just happened again. <laughs> it was just on again, or I heard it. Um, maybe Daddy is a Prince of Summer. Mine is actually. Um, well, you know, Daddy was the, <laughs> he, he's a Prince of Summer. Um, he romantic, flirtations, introspective and enchanting is the Prince of Summer. This is basically the Knight of Cups. A deeply emotional and probably romantic experience will sweep you off your feet. Things can move very quickly during such a whirlwind encounter. So stay balanced and make decisions with both your heart and your intellect. The Prince of Summer, if he's like mine, is a Scorpio, but can be a Pisces or a Cancer or somebody of those traits or attributes as well or just someone who comes in like representing the night of summer because he, um, he does approach you in this very romantic kind of way. I differentiate them by like the night of wands is this one who will, you know, like come and run in and pick you up and throw you on his horse and keep going without even stopping, you know, and save the day. That's the night of wands, but the night of cups is the one who like stands downstairs or, Maybe or maybe sits on his horse from downstairs and calls up to your window and serenades you. And perhaps that's what was happening a moment ago when daddy's home came on. Maybe that's what, why they were trying to get my attention. Masculine, 10 of autumn. Contentment comes from knowing that your finances are secure and your family's material needs are taken care of. It's important to honor traditions and to have pride in your heritage and the accomplishments of your ancestors. So a lump sum of money may be coming your way, masculine, or you may have, it may have come your way already. You may have saved up for this time or occasion, um, you know, this period of joy and love, and maybe you are going to Use that to sweep someone off their feet. You know, you're, you're about to make some sort of big move, um, you know, propose or ask someone out on a date, approach somebody that you've never spoken to before and try to initiate a new relationship. And you, you know, you want to be at your best. So you've been saving and trying to work on yourself and something like that. When I picked up the Prince of Summer, look what was behind it. It's the two of summer. You're falling in love or experiencing the deepening of emotion in your current relationship. Marriages or romantic partnerships in distress can also be saved. Don't give up. 
So also, um, in the dice for the week, in the love reading, I did, we did get a try again. Um, so like something can be saved, like don't give up. If you're, if you've tried to work out a relationship and it, it just hasn't happened yet and it hasn't materialized the way you wanted it to, hasn't come together just right yet, try again. The masculine is surrounded by the 10 of spring, two tens in a row. This, um, some difficulty that he may have been experiencing in the past coming to an end. You're working far too hard and the stress will soon become too, too much. This is also a need for balance. And this can be about physical um, health being at risk too by doing too much and becoming stressed out, like high blood pressure and things I'm feeling. Reach out for help from others if that's happening and take some time to play and enjoy life. Like put your wands down and chill out for a little bit. Enjoy your family. Enjoy yourself, your free time your money if you've earned money enjoy that the king of spring is in your subconscious he is inspiring dramatic <laughs> ambitious and wise now's your moment to step up into a leadership role don't back away from the spotlight as your plans will be successful as long as you stay focused on the big picture the king of spring is the quintessential divine masculine of the tarot he's also a leo sagittarius or aries or someone likened to those traits or attributes and this could be the masculine very much so again like i was saying he maybe he was saving up so that he could take some sort of new position new role maybe a leadership role and, and step out as they say um, and that he could, that could be what's on his mind right now. And in doing so that alleviates the stress that he's had, maybe, maybe he's wanted to do this for some time and it's delayed, you know, and that, that becomes frustrating. That becomes, um, stressful. Feminine, the six of autumn, like one of my most favorite cards in the entire deck, your success and prosperity have allowed you to pay off debts, acquire wise loans, and to receive a grant or a scholarship. In return for heaven's blessings, be sure to share the wealth with others through donations of time or money. And either of those can go to reputable charities, even strangers, loved ones. We exchange things without wanting something back, like free of agenda, free of strings, just because it's something we want to do from the heart or because it's the right thing to do. We feel, we feel it's the right thing to do morally or whatever. And coming to the queen of summer, who is compassionate, loving, giving, and psychic. The queen of summer is a Scorpio. She can also be a Cancer or a Pisces, but this is it's most connected to Scorpio, similar to what I was saying about the queen of swords being most connected to Air, Aquarius as a fixed sign. Scorpio is also a fixed sign. It's the fixed sign of the water element. So the queen of summer is most connected to that um, zodiac. This is a time of deep emotions and heightened intuition that you can trust completely. Be mindful that you don't ignore your own needs while caring for others. So that's what I was talking about over here, particularly for the masculine. Um, but I guess we got to, you know, be mindful of the same in our subconscious. Very nice. This is the Knight of wands that I was talking about. The one that comes and he doesn't even stop his horse. He just grabs you and throws you on his back or holds you in, the, in his arm and keeps going. He is passionate, charismatic, confident, and restless. An opportunity arises that needs your attention right away. Moving quickly is important, yet there's nothing you can't handle if you follow your inner guidance. It's going to be a wonderful opportunity, whatever it is, sitting here underneath the six of autumn and the queen of summer. And it can be connected again, not only to a fire sign, a Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries, but to a Scorpio who can be showing up here as both the queen of summer and the prince of spring because... Scorpio is ruled by Mars, the red planet. Crowning the union. Speaking of Scorpio, it is release or death. It's time to release the past and to move on to something new. This ending is your first step on the way to a happier future. Well, that's what new moons are all about, right? They're an ending that gives way to this newness. And it's an opportunity for us to plan and really consider what we want new in our life without focusing or even thinking at all about what's old and what we're letting go. Just let that stuff fall away. What do you want new? Write it down if you want. I, I write letters to the universe all the time, all the time. I'm sure I'm going to write one for this moon, uh, letting them know what I want new in my life. That's how I manifest. Or you can do the same. Just release anything that's been holding you back from those things and allow yourself to be transformed allow your finances to be transformed if that's the situation allow allow your love life 
um, to be transformed. Allow yourself to be transformed for you to ascend your vibration to step up higher. And so you become more intuitive, heightened psychic awareness with the queen of summer too. At the root, the chariot, which major kind of called the chariot represents the sign of cancer. Um, another very intuitive water sign. You can successfully balance various or opposing energies at once through determination and focus. You've earned the rewards and recognition that you're receiving. The chariot is a card of victory. So we're saying we've earned it. Nobody's doing us a favor. We've earned this win, right? Uh, chariot is also about um, travel. It's a card of movement, not unlike a wands card. Wands cards are about movement too. It's a card of movement. It's a card of moving, maybe. You might be moving physically to a new home, a new job. Um, it's about modes of transportation, planes, trains, automobiles. And it can be about coming together. Maybe where something was stagnant because we were holding on to something that needed to die. Now we're finally letting it go, so there's movement. At the heart of the matter, the seven of spring, be assertive, believe in yourself and don't let anyone take away your personal power. Trust that your inner guidance is true and follow it completely. You should trust it. You are the queen of summer. You have that energy. She's highly intuitive. Trust that inner guidance. Let's see what else we get here. If we clarify these a little further with the Doreen Virtue Romance Angel Oracle, you attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. All about the law of attraction. What we put out there is what we're going to bring back. So we want to, in that case especially, let go of control issues and allow this situation to unfold naturally. Let go of control issues. We have a past life relationship with which we're dealing. We've known each other before. past life relationship and express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. Maybe be the prince of summer. He makes the romantic gesture. He invites you out or he, he gifts you something. He invites you to kiss him and then he turns into a handsome prince from this frog. Maybe he offers you commitment sitting here atop the two of summer. That's a possibility too. He offers you commitment. Only one person is fit to fill those shoes, right? To be his partner. Only one very special person. This could be the time that he approaches them by expressing his love and going ahead and making the romantic gesture. But for somebody, or in some case, there's also unrequited love. And I haven't seen this card in a long time. And this is my second time now seeing it tonight because I saw it when I was shuffling too. And I said, oh. Something has to be released or someone has to be released as well. So death to an old relationship too. There's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going. Um, something else that causes this card to show up for me is like imbalance. Um, it's not really that there's not, that there's no love there. It's that the person is off. Like they're not, um, it's kind of like a chemical imbalance and it can be attached maybe for the masculine specifically. Um, it can be attached to this 10 of spring. Like the, when I was saying I was feeling something about health too, that can be what, what's causing this too to show up. And maybe that's why he hasn't spoken up yet or why he's not, he hasn't spoken up, you know, recently, perhaps he's a little bit off. Not off as in crazy <laughs> off as in like not completely himself, not completely well. Express your love and one more. Getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. Express your love. I'm going to cut. Separation. Time apart from your partner is on the horizon. Well, with all I've been feeling, all I've been seeing, I'm thinking that this is separating from whomever um, that person is with whom we shared the unrequited love. That's with whom you're separating, if anyone, um, and that this otherwise doesn't apply to everyone. Because I, I promise you, I've seen love upon love upon love 
um, for this week in a variety of ways. So this, is, this is my third reading for this, a, a similar period. Overall energy is calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. I just got to somebody's family represented by the 10 of earth might be who's making them feel uneasy too. like somebody's family putting pressure on them. And that may be why that may be why unrequited love. And that may be why 10 of wands. And it could be from the family. Um, that could be from whom you have to separate. Or from somebody, in, you know, in particular in your family. Um, let's, well, let's move on to these. Atop the six of autumn, heart to heart conversations. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other. So I said the sixth of autumn is about, you know, giving and receiving without agenda. So that would definitely, a heart to heart conversation would definitely apply there. Um, you, you know, give to me from the heart your words from the heart and I give you mine and we're not expecting anything in return. Atop the queen of summer, make the effort. Great love is worth the steps you're guided to take. This could be direction to a queen of summer, specifically to a water sign, maybe perhaps specifically a Scorpio to make a move. One of you guys listening out there that hasn't, that's been like sitting on your hands and afraid to move. Um, and in the more general sense, and of course it just, it just applies by way of any zodiac sign, finding, you know, the the compassion and and the the strength also, and also like the knowing that's needed, all those things the Queen of Summer has, finding all of that in order to be able to step forward and make the effort and go after what you want. Atop the Prince of Spring, codependency, addictions are affecting your romantic life. That can be connected to this too. Um, I'm, uh, hopefully I'll feel more so how in a second. Um, codependency, maybe it's upon a fire sign or you're a fire sign and that's in this codependent situation. Um, a Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius that keeps trying to come out of my mouth in something toxic. A situation with somebody, but I, I keep getting pulled back to this 10 of, um, 10 of fire and it being connected to a health issue. Somebody could really have like a substance abuse issue um, as well. And when I, when I pick this up, I don't normally think that I usually say it's usually like a toxic relationship, whether it's a friendship or something else. Um, but I've just been, as you guys have heard, just been feeling something about health connected with that. And now to see this, this can be a, um, feminine energy thinking about a masculine energy in her life. Somebody that, that has some sort of dependency, on, you know, substance, some substance abuse, maybe drugs or alcohol, um, or something that is causing, like, that can cause like a poor health, maybe even cigarettes. Like, you know, it's not necessarily going to kill you. Um, but it's not good for like your blood pressure and heart. And I'm not speaking against, you know, like, you know, judgmental about anybody. I smoked myself for years, years until one day I just didn't. And it was really like that. I just, one day I just didn't. I just said, I'm not doing this anymore. And I didn't. Um, but it, it, that, that had been years coming for years. I, I said that and it wasn't true. I went back to the store and bought another pack. So, you know, it is what it is, but maybe that's what somebody can get new in their life. Um, maybe what you can ask for new in your life is a life without this substance, right? Without the dependency upon this substance. Maybe you can ask the universe, please help me to release this thing that is holding me back. And, you know, allow me to wake up tomorrow and not want to pick it up. 
and continue to give me the strength of that Leo the Lion, wherever that was. Give me that strength to help me to keep powering forward without this thing. That can be what it is for somebody too. A few somebodies, I, I think. That can also be what you might want to let go of for Lent. Maybe use that as an inspiration as well. Um, even if you're not you know, religious, I'm certainly not. But it's an opportunity to um, commit to yourself, like I spoke about in the beginning of the reading, and to let something go for your own sake and in, in promise to yourself for you I'm not going to do this thing for at least 40 days. And then if you can do it for 40 days, you can do it for 41, you can do it for 42, you can do it for 43, and maybe you'll never pick that thing up again. Crowning the union. I'm sorry. I, and I, look, I, I'm so out of it that I did the feminine first. I never do that. I always start over here. Um, so let's go back over to the masculine. Wow. Atop the 10 of autumn. Reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, we could be walking away from somebody in our family or going against what somebody in our family wants. And then in a sense, at the same time, restoring our family because family doesn't have to be blood. It can be family that we've put together and you're reconciling with a, a friend or a, you know, a lover or something. And one way or another, someone from your past is returning to your life masculine. Um, and that was, that's been evident throughout the other readings. That's why I wasn't worried a few moments ago when I saw that unrequited love. I'm like, eh, it doesn't apply. <laughs> it doesn't apply. The love that between these couples, it has been very requited. Atop the 10 of spring. Honeymoon, enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. This can be, maybe somebody's going out for Valentine's Day. We're talking about holiday time. Um, otherwise, I think this represents the honeymoon phase of the relationship that is going to uh, take place, whether it's a brand new relationship or it's a reconciliation. You know, this, this new, very giddy phase uh, of joy during the month of joy. Atop the King of Spring. Give your relationship a chance and work on your partnership. So step into this leadership role. Take this, you know, woman or man by the hand and you lead, you know, back to happiness and joy. Uh, crowning the union, a top release or death is romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. Atop the chariot, this could be the one. You've already met the romantic partner you seek. And at the heart of the matter, I kept feeling this stuff about family, as you guys know. It's here crossing this um, 10 of earth that I couldn't leave alone that's attached to the family I was feeling. Here we go, healing family issues, okay? Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents, but it's not just your parents. Anybody that's so impactful upon you that you can't move forward with your life or with your love life or both or either, you have to heal that. You have to heal it by either repairing the relationship or walking away from it. But you, it, you obviously can't go on like that. So some, some of us have got some stuff to work out um, with someone or some ones. But as far as our feelings and what we want, um, going after them in, involves speaking up for ourselves, having genuine conversations from the heart, not ignoring our feelings, not fighting our feelings, going after them, releasing, um, you know, our, our need for control, right, to maybe fight the feelings, releasing that and, and instead pursuing them, healing family issues, giving things a chance, trying again, even if it didn't work out before, and having a good time, knowing that trusting that this kind of energy is ending and we're moving into calmer, stiller waters and a more relaxed time. We're not going to continue to be, you know, frustrated and stressed out. I'm going to further clarify these one more time on a very similar note with my Ascended Master cards, also by Doreen Virtue, beginning with Detached from Drama and Pallas Athena, the goddess of war. So this is more that fire energy, the goddess of war. Red. Um, again, Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. That kind of energy. But even she, even the goddess of war, is saying stop it with the war. <laughs> like detached from drama. Who needs this? 
and we should listen to her. And listen in general to ourselves, our feelings, um, our intuition, all of that. And work your magic, says St. Germain. He's saying put yeah, your gifts to use in your own on your own behalf. And if you've got to walk away from a relationship, go now, says Serapis Bay. So if you got to run toward a relationship, go now. If you're if you're going to be the knight of water, or you're going to be the knight of wands. It's time for you to take off. Speaking of water, Queen Oshun says, "Drink more." Maybe we're getting some heightened psychic awareness. We're getting heightened in, um, intuition. Our gifts, spiritual gifts, are increasing. We're receiving a promotion, further ascension. Perhaps because we're stepping deeper into love. You do that, that steps up your vibration. And you will need to drink more water. Listen and yes, says Ganesha. Yes, I'm removing the obstacles that were in your way before. Yes, I'm going to cut. He also showed up in a different deck on one of the other readings. And choose peace, says Yogananda. So we started with this deck and the shuffling with detached from drama and Palace Athena, and we're ending on choose peace. So let go of drama and foolishness and whatnot. And instead, let's just yeah, release this frustration and agony and stress that's not, that's making us unhealthy and go the peace route. And the overall energy is nurture yourself and Mother Mary. Today, she also, it was not only um, Venus entering Pisces, today was also the feast day of Our Lady of Lords, which is a celebration of Mary and her visitation um, to a child named Bernadette in Lords, France. The top reconciliation and the 10 of earth is spiritual law of attraction. So what we put out, we send out the positive vibes of security and love and family. And that's what we get back. And that's how we end up reconciling and healing a, a relationship with someone. A top honeymoon and the 10 of spring is persistence, says Lou. So this is about not giving up. But at the same time, again, we don't want to um, overexert ourselves. Persistence, tackle the situation, handle it, and then like release anything that is um, stressful that's attached to it. And this can also be persistence and again trying to trying to beat an addiction. Like I said, I you know for years I said I was going to quit smoking. I did not. I did not. And then one year, I guess it's like two, probably like two years now um, that I haven't done it. But whenever it was, because I didn't even make note of the day. It was just one day I just was like, no. And that was the end of it. I, you know, I remained persistent. That's what you, um, somebody is being called to do now, too, with regard to their addiction. And there's, it might not even be substance. It could be to a toxic relationship as well. Um, there could be some sort of sex addiction or something, too. There's a lot of different kinds of addiction. Whatever your codependency is, you are guided to release it now and... Um, to know that you have the support of the universe in order to do it. Like this is a, a prime time for you to try to do that. In the masculine um, subconscious here is mother, wife, sister, daughter, and Lady Nada. There's a feminine energy, perhaps his own, but it might be somebody else as well, um, with whom he needs to heal a relationship, a situation. It might be his romantic relationship that he needs to give a chance and, and try to fix things with this woman or man, that's re represented by the mother, wife, sister, daughter card here. Being guided to step into this role as the divine masculine. I said this represents the divine masculine. To take the lead on that and heal this relationship. Give it, give it a chance, but you take the lead. You initiate it. And 
speaking of the month of joy and all things wonderful here are top to heart to heart conversations and the six of earth giving about giving and receiving un completely unconditionally um, is the power of joy and my tria. How awesome is that? A top make the effort and the queen of summer twin flame and Angus. So this is what you're pursuing when you are persistent and you keep going and you make the effort. This is for what it's all, um, this is what it's all about. This is the reason, your motivation. And sitting here underneath the power of joy. So releasing drama, releasing regret, releasing resentment, releasing pain, you know, releasing the past completely, starting off fresh anew in joy, in love. A top codependency and the Prince of Spring is peace offering white buffalo calf woman. Uh, because I felt death over here and I said everything that I could possibly say, but that, like I mentioned everything else that I thought up to that point and I decided to leave that out when I was feeling about this high blood pressure and stuff. Um, but somebody could lose their battle with their addiction. Um, and I also felt that with the, with this sitting here underneath the 10 of autumn, that that may be for some from where the lump sum of money comes, it can be attached to some like a state or, or something that someone leaves behind, that someone who passes away leaves behind. Um, I'm also feeling some, someone who, someone who's married, this is very specific, so this can't be for, too many people, if it's from even for more than one that will watch this. Someone who's married, um, the spouse, it's the wife, I think. The spouse is ill. That's the unrequited love, though. That's not like, not that you want them to pass away, um, but you that relationship ha is has already died as well. And. Maybe this has happened already or it's happening. I don't know. But the universe encourages you to move forward with this and be happy um, rather than, I guess, you developing some sort of toxic relationship with the, with the memory, you know, and, and guilt and all that kind of stuff, if that made any sense. I hope it did because I, I tried to relay it as it was coming. And I, I really hate when I have to do this because um, I know and you guys know who, who watch me, um, who've, seen, who've seen me do this more than once. You guys know when I pull peace offering, um, white buffalo calf woman and or a proper burial for freedom sacrifice to Osiris, that it, it, it means death and it never, ever fails. It never, ever fails. It's never incorrect. So I'm going to try to pick my spirits back up. Um, <laughs> the death card. Um, I, I don't think that this is attached to it, though. Um, it's, just, it's just ironic. All right, I'm picking up my spirits. I think that this um, is related, the fertility in Pan and these romantic feelings, very much related to the horny nature of Scorpio and the sex dice that came up before um, that somebody could get the, the wand in that sense or the Prince of Wands in that sense. On top of this could be the one and the chariot is purification and white Tara. So it, this is a, a cleansing and a new, and a new start of a situation and relationship because we were victorious with the um, release of the one that was not. For some, thankfully, um, this really is about a peace offering 
it's it's connected to that need to release drama and toxicity as well and instead replace it with peace and happiness like um, Athena guided us to do. And at the heart of the matter, a top healing family issues and the seven of fire, which guides us to keep going. The seven of fire is very much so like persistence, guides us to keep going and not, you know, back away from our decisions and sort of Aquarius, even though it's a fire sign, like do remain, stand your ground and remain in that place where you want to be and how you want to be and, you know, what's up to you. And, um, Horus comes through to say whatever that means for you, whether you're having to let go of someone from your life, um, or you're welcoming some, you're welcoming someone or both, you're doing it accurately. You're seeing the situation accurately and moving forward as you were guided. So you are listening, you are using, um, this heightened intuition and psychic awareness to make your decisions, but also employing some uh, logic too, as we were guided to, yes, go with your heart, um, use, you know, your head too, and cater to and nurture yourself as well. Like keep yourself in mind and, and, you know, consider yourself. Don't keep putting other people before yourself. That would not be very Aquarian. And our further advice from the animal tarot to the masculine is the three of autumn. Your most satisfying and profitable career or relationship comes from following your passions, listening to your heart and doing what brings you joy. So everything that I just said, basically, um, surmise, <laughs> summarize here in this um, advice card for you. Your life purpose is best fulfilled by allowing your talents and true self to shine forth out into the world. This, of course, um, the three of autumn for me also, of course, can represent a party of three, not necessarily a romantic party of three, um, but, but possibly it could very well represent a love triangle. We've already seen that we got to let somebody go and somebody's coming and it has been in the suit of, of autumn. This is where I got stuck and this is where the reconciliation is too. So somebody's going and somebody's coming. <laughs> um, and I guess we can narrow this down to a two. Feminine for us, the four of spring. Very nice. It's time to kick back, relax, and to celebrate all that you have. Joy arises from success in your career, the completion of a project, or a very happy home life and family life, or a relationship, a commitment, all of that can be represented by the four of spring. This is marriage, engagement, all of those things that would bring us joy and happiness possible with the four of spring. For the masculine retreat, it's time to disconnect from the world. You may need to pull away and spend some time in nature or some time by yourself in order to, that can help you with releasing, um, the stress and maybe releasing the act, the third energy that you need to as well. Feminine express your love, go ahead and make the romantic gesture. And we're guided to do that here as well. Having a genuine organic heart to heart conversation. So the angels wanting to reconfirm, yes, that's what we want you to do. Please listen, masculine. You are seeking your freedom as has been shown, demonstrated here a few times already. We're walking away from someone or something or someplace and, um, instead moving into, um, and where we want to be and with whom we want to be and how we want to be, whatever the case, however it applies to you, freedom very Aquarian and feminine. If you want something done, right, you got to do it yourself. Moses says, take charge of this situation. You want joy. You bring yourself joy. You initiate it. You, you know, know what you have to do in order to uh, make it happen. Perhaps it's making a peace offering, right? Extend a hand. That's how you can take charge of the situation. I hope that you enjoy this new moon in Aquarius reading and find it helpful in navigating your day and days around that time. Namaste, angels. Mafi
时光，擦拭快乐。